what is going on people welcome to another edition of every man is a millionaire today we're going to talk about something that very few people talk about which is management management is the key to money once again management is the key to money and long-term wealth building you can have a small company you can have a large company but in any event you need to learn how to be a manager of people and money if you can hack that you are well on your way if this is your first time here this is glendon cameron your hustling godfather what we do here is we make money we stag money we protect money we do a little passive income all through hustling and entrepreneurship for those of you who are in the back of the bus that is starting a business and we're going to talk about in this video how you can start a business and how you can matriculate from a single person operation to a multi-person operation and why you should matriculate from a single person operation to a multi-person operation it's very very important all right so for those of you who want the five checking account blueprint go below i'm gonna do a special video on this and get on this list this will be for the five checking account blueprint which will be a critical part in you managing money so let's get into this wonderful bean footage first of all if you want to grow your income and you want to grow your company you will need employees or contractors or whatever you want to call them you're going to need more than yourself now i'm going to lift up the veal and let you into a little secret of what i've been on to i've hired two people and i'm getting ready to hire a third now before i hired these people i spent months and months and months prepping for their arrival as a small business operator you need to know how to do everything uh, one of the biggest mistakes i see many people making is they never develop a team they become good they make money but they never go through the hiring process because hiring sucks hiring is a drain upon resources hiring is time consuming so they get frustrated or they'll pull the trigger on the turd or they'll just not hire anyone and intentionally keep their company small don't do that hiring people is a learnable skill managing people is a learnable skill the first thing you have to do is learn how to manage yourself you must learn how to manage you before you can manage other people I know this sounds crazy it sounds a little weird but it's true then let's say you want to hire someone to be an admin clerk this is what you do you write up a job description then you do that job based upon the description that is going to let you know all of the uglies that are in that process that's going to like whoa this 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 job description and actually what the job is this is not mirroring up so i need to change the job description or i need to change the job that's a big tip there and the the, the big thing is and this is on the money i come across many entrepreneurs who don't have the five checking accounts or in the case of a holding company structure and in the case of an operating company structure they don't have the multiple checking accounts and they don't have the ledger accounts properly tagged you better believe Facebook is not operating with a few checking accounts. Facebook probably has dozens of checking accounts and they have what's called pre-approved signing authority, meaning that Facebook's so big that checks of a certain amount, the bank knows that those checks are coming in. And if a check that comes in out of sequence or something like that, they will not cash it. <laughs> this is why it's very hard to rip off these big companies. Now, you wanna get your stuff set up and what you want to do is bring on your employees part-time because the labor laws are really interesting 
bring them on part time and sit them down and say, look, this is your second interview. Your first interviews was just to get in the door. I like what you said. I like how you sound. Now I need to see how you perform because there are many people who can ace an interview. They're really good at interviewing, but their work ethic is lacking. So you sit them down for the next 90 days. This is what you got to do. You got to impress me. Tell them this. Be very, very clear. Now you're dealing with some of these millennial people. Some of them may get up and just quit immediately because they cannot be bothered about impressing you. They want to come in. They want to have a work-life balance. Ha <laughs> ha. This recession's about to take care of a lot of those attitudes. Because right now, well, not even true with that. There seems to be a, uh, a cornucopia of jobs. But when I was a kid, and put this in the comments, if I wanted to earn some money, I could literally walk around my neighborhood and earn 100 bucks a week as a kid in the 80s. Cut grass, take Coke bottles back. You have adults who can't do that right now because those opportunities don't exist. I'll do a special video on the fake job numbers. They are fake. They're 100% fake. And as we go through this recession, we're going to see more of that. But back on point, you got this person 90 days. Now, this is where you have to manage you because you need to go ahead and set up on your calendar every 30 days, bring them in, sit them down, like what's going on? Are you happy? Is this work too hard? Can you do this? Because they're going to teach you is the job description not good enough for someone coming off the street. Um, you're going to find out a lot of information by just silly sitting down, having a 10 to 15 minute conversation with your employees every 30 days. Now, I didn't do this with the last set because we were ramping up very fast. So this time I was like, OK, go back to what you know works. Go back to doing what you used to do when I used to hire people for the upscale garage sale, when I used to hire people for GC Solutions. I didn't have the problems I had last time. I know it was a different era, but the hiring process was much different because if I had a guy who was coming in to work as an installer, I was sitting down, I was like, you know, show me your tools. Because if you're an installer, they have tools. They know how, well, if you're going to put together some Herman Miller ethos space. What would you start off with? They should be able to tell you this, right? And one of the good things about uh, the warehouse work and the installers, it was pretty straightforward. Either they could do the job or they couldn't do the job. And what I had to do was to bring this process back down and make it very simple. Because here's something that will surprise you. And even today, and even with some of these millennial people, if you can provide a job that is challenging enough and rewarding enough, you'll lock them in. You'll lock them in because most people never have anyone to sit down and say, hey, these are my expectations for you. And just talk to them every now and then. Seriously, most people don't do this. I remember and I learned this lesson from Tricky Ken. <laughs> um, like clockwork, every two, three weeks. Hey, Glendon, what's going on? He pop him off as he sit down and I knew he was going to be a minute because he sit down, he crossed his legs and we we'll go over my projects. And he's like, what's this? What's this? Because Ken was a very good manager. This is because he was like holding together crazy personalities. And Ken had a policy of no blood, no file. If it wasn't something like really egregious, if it was something that did not affect the bottom line, he was like, I'm not worried about that. Y'all work that out. He didn't get into these little messy disputes and stuff, right? So I learned a lot from him. And then I went back and I started to institute some of this. And because like I said, I'm getting ready to scale up. I'm getting ready to hire some people because I know for me to grow because I it's just been me and one contract person this most of the, this whole year and part of that is i knew that management was the key to wealth i knew that i had to become a better manager in this new economy because my intention is to make a million dollars a month i'm not going to do that by myself it's not going to happen i can estimate it's going to take a team of about 10 people maybe less but let's say eight to ten so i got two and i'm about to get a third 
And here's another big issue. When you're building a team, when you are creating a management system, you buy capacity in advance of the execution of that capacity, which means you're going to have people, you're going to have them on payroll, and they're not going to be as efficient as they will become under your tutelage. So you're going to be taking time, doing the things that you do to make money, to train people to get them set up to help you make more money. So you're going to have to take a hit. Now, how many times have you heard me say, I live well within my means. I won't be taking a hit on the personal income because I don't spend that money now. So it's a habit. So when I start paying these people and putting out money for paid traffic, I'm not going to miss it because I never used it to live. This is very important. You got to learn how to manage you. You got to learn how to manage your money because I'm tingling right now. Okay. I'm excited right now. We're about to enter. This is going to be my third recession that I've been a business owner. And the, the last two, I weathered without a problem. Uh, the first one was when I first got in the storage auction business. Uh, the last one, I started this company during it. And this third one, I'm like, bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. Because I can probably exponentially grow my company. And you can do this too if you're properly positioned to a very high level of profitability and scale during this recession because a lot of folks are just not going to have the wherewithal because they didn't prep because they don't know how to put together a company so what did i just say in this i put this in the comments what what are the top three parts of what i said put those in the comments to see if you were listening and you should watch this video five or six times because many of you uh, watch the video, maybe you watch it on uh, fast speed and on to the next one and you never absorb the information and you never execute on the information because you're so caught up in that loop of learn, absorb knowledge. I'm saying get knowledge, pause, execute on that knowledge. Uh, I haven't read a business book in about three years. I haven't. And part of the reason is I haven't had time. <laughs> And another reason is I'm building something that doesn't really exist on the level that I want to build it. Online education is huge. It's going to grow tremendously. What you're going to see is colleges being replaced by certificate courses, online education, which will be much cheaper and the people will be able to come out of these courses and go out and start making money very quickly. The old college paradigm is just, it ain't going to work for most people. If you go to school on scholarship, you're an athlete, mom and dad got millions, go to school, knock yourself out. But if you got to go into 30, 40, 50, 100, 200K in debt, and then you get out only making a job, making between 32 and 50K, you're hustling backwards. All right. So I'll see you guys. There's a link below for the, and I'm going to do this. It may be a live stream. It may be a video, but. If you want to be notified, the five checking account blueprint, because I'm going to go very detailed and answer all these questions that people put over here and put over here. So that will be happening there. All right. See you guys later. You have a good day. Be productive.